Hey everyone, it's Lisa Fox here with Cobalt Banker in Miami, Florida. Um, wanted to give you guys a little update on what's going on in the real estate market. Today's Monday, April 27th. First of all, we've been in isolation or quarantining about five or six weeks now. And so a lot has changed in that period of time. Definitely when we first started the quarantine, a lot of realtors needed to adapt. Thank goodness this wasn't something that happened 20 years ago because there's no way we would have had the technology that we have today um, in order to show properties online and all the tools that we have, thankfully, that we're able to conduct business virtually to a large extent. What we're doing is we're getting people, we're getting properties shown, um, Facebook Live, Instagram Live, YouTube, walkthrough tours, floor plans, all of that. Even now, they can do electronic closings, and that's new for 2020. So there's a lot that can be done virtually and safe. So what we're doing is we're making sure that if anybody wants to see a property up front, they tour all the videos and tour all the material so that they can rule out um, houses that aren't going to work for them. And then once they know for sure they're interested in the property, uh, we are doing showings. You know, obviously with face masks and gloves and, you know, no touch in many cases, but we are showing property down here. When it comes to single family homes, um, to a large extent, unless a seller won't allow us to. It really depends on the, the people buying and selling the house, what they want to do. Now, when it comes to condominiums, it's a little bit of a different story. Um, some buildings aren't allowing showings or realtors and buyers to come through. But I have heard of instances where people are actually writing contracts sight unseen. That is happening. Um, so, and then in the case where there's properties that have tenants that are tenant occupied, um, in my case, I have two of those properties that are really not being shown at all. Mostly everything is virtual. So with that, it's been really interesting to watch a number of properties going under contract. Um, I took a look, which I'm going to um, talk to you guys about. But looking back, I mean, you know, January and February is usually our slow time of business. Um, it's just a little bit slower in general, unless, you know, besides the snowbirds are people that are seasonal in Miami. January is just a slower period over overall for the year. So um, in February as well, it starts to kind of pick up in the spring down here. Although in February, people are out looking to a large extent. So just to give you an idea, in February, um, I'm looking week by week. February 17th, 100, 166 properties went under contract in Miami-Dade County. And that number increased all the way, you know, every week until March 9th, 313 properties went under contract. And then March 16th, um, 375 properties. So where am I getting at? So then once we started to go into COVID-19 and um, people staying at home, that number started to drop, the amount of properties going under contract to 272, 231, 233. Um, that was April 6th. Only 233 properties went under contract, which is larger than in February, the 100, 166. So still people were doing business, still people were writing offers on properties. Um, also, I wanna say that part of the number, early April, people, people going pending in the system, could have been also realtors that might have had the property, an offer on their property earlier, but they finally marked it pending in the system. So, you know, that number can be a little bit artificial, but now when you go to looking at April 20th, 268 properties went under contract. And then this week, April 27th, 291 properties went under contract. Now, the bottom line of that, besides following my numbers, is that almost as many properties went under contract in Miami this past week. I'm talking single family homes and condos combined. Almost as many as like our peak March months, 313, March 9th, actually, and then March 16th, 375. But 291 this past week has been very active. In our office in Cobalt Banker, we had 
uh, four new listings specifically that my broker was telling me about that were um, brand new listings on the market that went under contract the same week, either full price or over asking. Um, so these properties were in great condition, updated. And so, you know, properties in great condition that are newly updated with newer updates and newer finishes, for the most part, usually sell for a higher price and a faster sale because the buyers these days um, prefer, to a large extent, things that they don't have to do any work. Um, so that's a whole other topic to talk about. You know, obviously, there's a lot of properties out there that need updating where you can probably negotiate a better deal on a property or the property is priced less to compensate for the um, less upgrades. So that's a whole other discussion, but mainly I wanted to point out that um, there's a lot of properties going under contract now that people are writing offers um, and, and going under contract. Now, in terms of the amount of new listings available, um, there is about 80%, 20% less listings went on the market in so far in April versus March. But we still had about 1,600 new listings go on the market. So that's a good amount too. So just wanted to give you guys that. Um, I didn't want to make this video too long. People want to know if we're in a buyer's market, are we in a seller's market? Um, that really depends on what part of town you're in, what type of property you're in. Um, but overall in the condo market, we are definitely in a buyer's market. Um, we have 20 months supply of inventory in the city of Miami, which means it would take 20 months, almost two years to sell out all the condo inventory provided that no other condos come on the market as of now, it would take 20 months to sell all that condo inventory out. So that's a buyer's market. Um, a lot of sellers have already been reducing prices in the condo market. Um, we're probably gonna see more of that in the next rest of the year, um, 2021. Now, in the single family home market, overall in Miami-Dade County, we've been at a pretty much a six month supply of inventory on average. Um, that's a balanced market between sellers and buyers, meaning it's not a heavy seller's market, not a heavy buyer's market. Um, however, when you go into certain areas and look at different price ranges, that number does go up. Um, I was looking in Coral Gables, Coconut Grove, um, and then also Pinecrest, Palmetto Bay. They're more running about a um, seven, eight, nine, ten month, depending on the month, um, supply of inventory. And that is more of a buyer's market as well. Um, but when we had the surge of sales in March, that number decreased down to uh, six months supply. So we'll see what happens with COVID-19 and how we go with that. Um, we're also going to see how unemployment affects the real estate market. But so far, um, so far, it's really looking positive in terms of the amount of sales happening now. Um, buyers want to get out. They want to get out of their house. They want to look for property, um, and for a large, to a large extent, they're able to do it. We'll just have to wait and see when again our out-of-town buyers come back into the mix, and how that affects the overall market. So that's my update for today, Monday, April twenty-seventh. Everybody have a great evening. Stay safe, and I'll see you guys next time. Okay, bye.